so welcome to the lectures in ring theory so we will be in this lecture we will be covering these following four points in this particular section so the first thing is the definition of ring and its example and then we will solve these three problems so let me now first tell you what is the definition of a ring so basically a ring has two operations one is called as addition and the second is called as multiplication they need not be usually addition and multiplication these are just symbols so the first symbol is called addition the second symbol is called multiplication so so in ring we will have two operations the first thing is that this this set r with respect to the first operation which i am writing as plus it should be an abelian group so r with respect to plus must be an abelian group now you know what are the uh, what, what do you mean by abelian group you must have closure with respect to the first operation then you must have associativity with respect to the first operation then you must have identity which is uh, with respect to the first operation and that identity whatever identity i will get i'm going to denote it as the the i will call it identity only okay let me not write anything right here so because it will be the identity with respect to the first operation and fourth is inverse with respect to the first operation and you know it's abelian means what means a plus b must be equal to b plus a okay so whenever a, a set r is given to you with two operations with respect to the first operation i will check whether it is forming an abelian group means if a is in the ring if a is in r b is in r then a plus b must also belong to r associativity you all know then a plus identity must be equal to a again that is the definition of identity and inverse means a plus some element a dash must be there so that you will get the identity back so this is the first thing that you have to check for a ring the second thing that you have to check for the ring is that this r must be closed with respect to the second operation so the closure must hold in the with respect to the second operation means if a and b belong to r then a dot b must also belong to r this is the second uh, next important thing the third is that it should also be associative okay and associative means a dot b dot c must be equal to a dot b dot c this should also hold and the third important thing is now see you if you look at the first point it is with respect to the first operation if you look at the second point it is with respect to the second operation so now in the third thing we are going to connect the two operations okay that is called distributivity means i'm going to connect addition and multiplication in a single rule what is that it means a dot b plus c see this is the second operation this is the first operation is equal to how much so i want to use distributivity means what this multiplication is going to distribute over the addition i will repeat why is it called distributivity because this multiplication sign is going to distribute over the addition so which is a dot b plus a dot c so this property must also hold if all these three properties hold then this set r with respect to these two operations plus and minus is called as a ring okay so when i give you a set and i give you two operations plus and dot if you have to check that first the set is closed with respect to the first operation i mean it's abelian group with respect to the first operation it's 
it's it's close with respect to the second operation associative with respect to the second operation and last but not the least is what distributivity now let us move to some simple examples okay we write in simple examples so which is the simplest thing that comes in your mind we will have say take integers and we know that integers with respect to addition is a abelian group right so i know that z plus is a abelian group <coughs> so if i take two integers a and b and if i multiply them so this is an integer this is also an integer then is a plus b an integer yes if i take a into b dot c plus is equal to a dot a dot b into c is this true if a b c, c are any three integers take an example 2 into 3 into 4 is equal to 2 into 3 into 4 so this is true so this property holds for any three integers right and moreover if i multiply 2 into 3 plus 4 is it equal to 2 into 3 plus 2 into 4 yes so this holds for in general the distributivity property also holds for any three integers right so this property is also true so distributivity also holds so this means that i have got the first example of a ring that first example is z with respect to usual addition with respect to usual multiplication this is a this will form a ring okay if i want to see uh, see here that instead of taking integers if i take real numbers and if i take real numbers with respect to addition we all know that real numbers with respect to addition is also a clearly an abelian group right not only that if i take two real numbers a and b if i take real numbers 2 by 3 and if i take root root of suppose root of 5 okay these are real numbers you will again you will get a real number so this means that if a and b are real numbers a into b are also is also a real number and not only that a into b into c is equal to a into b into c so associativity with respect to multiplication also holds and what about the distrib distributivity clearly the distributivity for real numbers we have been using this since our school times right so because they were all real numbers right so this this also holds for real numbers for example 2 into 3 by 5 plus root 2 can be written as 2 into 3 by 5 plus 2 root 2 so this is nothing but your distributivity so this means that real numbers with respect to addition usual addition and usual multiplication also forms a ring okay so we have two examples of ring now first was z plus and now is r plus dot as soon as real numbers become a ring with respect to usual addition multiplication a question comes in your mind that if i take rational numbers and if i take addition and usual multiplication will this particular set form a ring check in your mind that if you take two rational numbers if you add them you will again get a rational number p by q plus plus some r by s is again some rational number m by n so it is close with respect to addition identity is there associativity here hold with respect to addition inverse of rational number p by q will be given by how much inverse of rational number p by q is minus p by q because the identity is how much zero with respect to the first operation is it abelian yes p by q plus r by s is the same as r by s plus p by q so it is abelian also and uh, if i take two rational numbers a by b and multiply it by c by d it is uh, it is ac by bd so this means that this is a rational number and this is also a rational number and their multiplication is also a rational number so it is also closed with respect to multiplication clearly q plus is a abelian group we have checked that now q q is also close with respect to multiplication associativity with respect to multiplication also holds if i take three rational numbers a1 b1 multiplied by a2 b2 and then multiplied by a3 b3 if i change the brackets we will get the 
same answer so associativity also clearly holds right and what about the distributivity does the distributivity hold if i take a by b into c by d plus r by s it is the same as a c upon b d plus a r upon b s so 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 distributivity also holds so this means that q plus dot will become a ring so we have got the third ring all the things all the sets well known sets that we know are becoming rings okay so this implies that the four egg fourth example i will just give you if you take complex numbers and with respect to usual addition and multiplication everything as i told you in the previous examples for rings and rational numbers everything will hold and it will also become a ring so these are the four well-known examples uh, i will again repeat them what are they the four rings that we have right now got is z real numbers rational numbers and complex numbers these all are rings okay let me move on to the next example so you take set f what is f f is the collection of all functions from r to r okay collection of all functions from r to r write a like slash collection of all functions from r to r is this set a ring with respect to addition and usual multiplication what is fx plus gx fx plus gx is nothing but what it is denoted by f plus g of x okay so if f is a function from r to r if g is a function from r to r then f plus g is also a function from r to r zero function acts like an identity function associativity holds f plus g plus h is also equal to f plus g plus h so this is associativity inverse of the function or with respect to addition is minus f function so associativity also holds f plus g is the same as g plus f so this means that f with respect to addition will form an abelian group so the first task is finished if i take two functions f and g and if i multiply them what is the multiplication we know that f into g of x is nothing but what fx into gx so if f and g are functions or uh, from r to r then fg is also a function from r to r so this product also this means that fg also belongs to what fg is also a function if i have two functions then the product is also a function from r to r okay then uh, associativity is clear because f into g into h will be equal to f into g into h you have done this right x into sin x into cos x this is the same as saying that x into sin x into cos x so you can obviously change the bracket so that is also not a very big deal what is remaining is now associate uh, distributivity so what is distributivity you have f into g into g plus h is equal to what fx into gx plus hx okay everything is applying on x so this is same as fx into gx plus fx into hx so yes so this is nothing but fg plus fh of x so when i remove this x's if, if i ignore these x's i will get f into g plus h is equal to f into g plus f into h so distributivity also holds and this means that my fifth example is ready that f plus with respect to multiplication set of all functions with respect to usual addition and usual multiplication of functions this is also forming a ring so we have now we have the fifth example ready in our list so that example is f plus and dot okay so the next example is what set of all matrices with 
entries uh, what are the entries of matrices the entries of matrices are the integers and i'm going to use usual addition and multiplication right so if you take a n by n matrix and if you add it with another n by n matrix you will again get a n by n matrix what are the entries inside this matrix these are integers okay so this means this is closure with respect to addition the identity will work up to be zero we know that a plus b plus c matrix will be the same as a plus b plus c and associativity holds the inverse of that matrix with respect to the addition will be the minus of a and we also know that a plus b matrix will always be equal to b plus a matrix this means that m n z with respect to the addition operation is obviously an abelian group if i go for the second part the second part is multiplication if a is a matrix b is a n by n matrix what is a into b matrix we know that if i take an n by n matrix and if i multiply it by again an n by n matrix then we will again get a n by n matrix so this means that a into b is also n by n matrix and therefore it will become an element of the set m n r the next is associativity with respect to multiplication a into b into c is equal to what obviously we know that this is property holds so this is sorry yeah sorry it's correct a into b into c is equal to a b into c so this also holds so associative with respect to the second operation is also true and distributivity property uh, is also correct because a into b plus c is always equal to a into b plus a into c so this means that my set mnr with respect to addition and with respect to multiplication is a, also a ring so this means the second example is also ready with us now that m n z if you really i'm sorry this is r if you really observe here instead of z i can also write what i in, instead of taking integer entries if i take real entries if i take complex entries if i take rational entries everything is going to do so m n r plus dot this is also a ring and so on so here you can change your rings here you can take complex numbers rational numbers anything all those will also become rings so the third example is that zn with respect to addition modulo n and multiplication modulo n this forms a this will form a ring okay so obviously we know that zn with respect to addition modulo n is a abelian group so this is very well known to you because actually it is a cyclic group if you remember this is a cyclic group and we know that cyclic is always what cyclic is abelian group so this is uh, abelian group uh, if you take any any element of ma of zn and multiply it with an element of zn multiplication modulo n then again the answer that you will get that will also be an element of zn okay you will just take modulo n so if i am working in z10 and if i multiply 3 bar and modulo 10 if i multiply by 7 bar i will get 21 bar which is the same as 1 bar in z10 so this uh, this one bar also belongs to z10 so yes so closure with respect to multiplication uh, is clearly true and uh, associativity is a bar multiplied by b bar multiplied by c bar is also uh, holding true so a bar into b bar into c bar so this is also true what about the distributivity property it is a bar into b bar plus c bar is equal to a bar into b bar plus a bar into c bar so this is all multiplication modulo and addition modulo okay so this also holds so this means i have got one more ring namely the next ring i have obtained is zn with respect to addition modulo and multiplication so now we have plenty of examples of rings in our hand but still we are always searching for new types of rings so real numbers integers complex numbers rational numbers matrices functions set and zn all these sets are rings uh, so let me write the fourth question is so r1 is given to be a ring 
okay and r2 is also given to be a ring then r1 cross r2 will contain what type of elements it will contain all pairs of r1 and r2 where is this little r1 this r1 is in capital r1 and this r2 is in r2 okay this also forms a forms a group with respect to which type of multiplication addition and multiplication component wise okay so this uh, forms a group name this forms a ring okay so if i'm taking a comma b from r1 cross r2 and if i'm taking c comma d from r1 cross r2 what is the addition defined as what is the addition component wise a b plus c d will be equal to how much it will be equal to a plus c component component wise and b plus c so this is also an element of r1 cross r2 and what is the component wise multiplication defined as a comma b into c comma d will be equal to how much a c comma first component will multiply the first component comma second component will multiply the second so with respect to this addition see this addition is component wise addition this multiplication is component wise multiplication so this means that i will check all the properties as usual and what this exercise tells us that yes it will become a ring so r1 cross r2 with respect to component wise addition and with respect to component wise multiplication this satisfies all the properties required for a ring so we have new rings for example if you take z we know that z is a ring correct and we know that set of complex numbers is also a ring so both are rings so can you form a new ring now yes you can now say that z cross c with respect to component wise addition and with respect to component wise multiplication this also forms a rings okay you can take any two rings and just put them together and in general what i want to tell you is that if i have r1 r2 r3 up to rn if i have n rings and if i take the direct product of r1 r2 up to rn then this will also form a ring again with respect to which operation which is with respect to the component wise addition and multiplication this will also form a ring so now you have infinite many rings with you so if somebody asks you is z cross z cross z cross z is this a ring you will just say yes because each one of them is a ring and direct product of rings is again a ring so you can form as many as rings as you want okay so in this section we are going to discuss these four problems now the first one is the theorem uh, this this theorem we are not going to prove i will just quickly uh, go through the statement this theorem says that if you multiply any element in a ring with zero either from the left hand side or the right hand side you are going to get always what zero who is this zero which zero is this this is the additive identity okay so if i multiply any element of ring with respect to that identity add additive identity then i am going to get what i am going to get finally i am going to get zero if i multiply a by any number minus b now who is minus b minus b is the additive inverse of additive inverse of what additive inverse of b okay so a into minus b will be the same as minus a into b and that is the same as minus of ab okay so this you have been doing in your school days also that x into minus y is same as minus of xy or it is minus of x into y that is what we are trying to write and this is also uh, true that if you take additive inverse of a and multiply it by the additive inverse of b what you will you get is you will get the product to be ab so i am not going to prove this theorem whenever time comes whenever i need to use this property i am going to straight away use this property and move ahead the next definition is of uh, is of ring homomorphism so what is a ring homomorphism now all of us know that uh, what was group homomorphism group homomorphism was uh, phi of a star b was uh, equal to phi a star phi b that was group homomorphism so in ring you have two operations so what one is addition and other is multiplication okay so what is a ring homomorphism so let me write so let phi be uh, suppose the phi is a homomorphism between two rings okay 
finds homomorphism between R1 ring with respect to addition and multiplication. And here I'm go going to call it R2 ring with respect to some other operation addition plus dash and dot dash. OK, so what is the homomorphism between these two rings? OK, the, huh, the homomorphism phi will be such that phi of x plus y this is the first operation that must be equal to how much that must be equal to phi x plus phi y now here you have plus dash okay and it should also be a homomorphism with respect to the second operation means phi of x dot y should be equal to phi x dot dash phi of y same same definition that was there in group theory what was the definition of group theory phi of a star b was equal to what phi a star dash phi b same definition will be used for two times once addition and once if both these things are true then that homomorphism i will be calling a ring homomorphism okay is it clear so i hope the definition of ring homomorphism is now very much clear to you okay let us see one example of uh, ring homomorphism now so i am taking f which is a collection of all functions is this a ring yes we know that f plus dot is a ring okay and i am taking a homomorphism from what i'm taking a homomorphism from that this ring so this is also a ring we know that this is a ring and real numbers is also a ring and what homomorphism i'm, I'm taking i'm taking take phi of f equal to what f of a so i will write the details on the next page so i'm going to take homomorphism phi from the set f and i'm going to send it to real numbers both are rings as i've done in the previous section and what is that homomorphism phi of f is equal to how much what have i written here phi of f is equal to f of a okay so f of a now this is a, a ring homomorphism can can we quickly check why because it is phi of f plus g is equal to so this is the first point okay i'm checking this phi of f plus g by definition will be equal to how much replace f by f plus g so it is f plus g at a because i've replaced f by what f is replaced by f plus g but what is f plus g of a but f plus g of a is nothing but f of a plus g of a right and what is f of a now what is f of a look at look at this definition what is f of a f of a is phi of f and what is g of a g of a is phi of g so this means that phi of f plus g is equal to phi of plus phi g so the first property of ring homomorphism is true can we check the second property what is phi of x dot y equal to phi x dot dash phi y okay so if i write that phi of f dot g will be equal to by definition it is f dot g of a what is f, f dot g of a it is f of a dot g of a which is nothing but phi of f multiplied by phi of g so this means that both the properties are satisfied and therefore the function phi remember this phi um, is very very uh, clearly because this might be asked as an objective questions in your exam so what is the function phi of f is equal to what f of a this is a ring homomorphism because both the properties are satisfied okay if i go to the next example the eighth example phi from what z to zn okay phi from so this z is also a ring and this zn is also a ring and what is the function that i'm giving you phi of a is equal to what a modulo n okay then that function will also be a ring homomorphism so let me write it on the new page so what is the function phi phi is from what z to zn and what is the so this is a ring this is also a ring and what is the function that i'm defining phi of a is equal to how much phi of a is equal to a modulo n okay i hope you are understanding that if i take phi from z to z10 okay what is phi of a uh, what is phi of uh, 15 here phi of 15 is 15 modulo 10 what is 15 modulo 10 15 modulo 10 means 5 so this means that this function sends 15 to which number it is sending 15 to 5 bar okay what is z10 z10 contains 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar up to 9 bar so where will 15 go 15 will go to 5 bar where will 8 bar go 
8 bar will go to 8 bar only because 8, 8 bar is not greater than 10. Where will uh, 12 go? 12 bar, uh, here if I bring it here, what is 12 modulo 10? 12 modulo 10 is 2. So 12 will go to 2 bar. Okay, this is the way, this is the way this function is actually defined. Okay, is it a homomorphism? This is what we are supposed to just verify. And the exercise says that yes, this is a, this is in fact a homomorphism. Uh, which type of homomorphism? A ring homomorphism because phi of a plus b will be equal to what a plus b modulo n and what is a plus b modulo n a plus b modulo n is nothing but a modulo n plus b modulo n and this is nothing but phi of a and this is nothing but phi of b what is phi of a into b what is phi of a into b it is a b modulo n what is a b modulo n a b modulo n means a modulo n and then i will multiply it by, by what b modulo n this is also you can check and therefore this is nothing but phi of a into phi of b so this means that clearly both the definitions and therefore this phi is what this phi is a ring homomorphism